What's up guys, I'm back with another small cap stock, Lazy Day Holdings. So if you're afraid of the great reset or you're just thinking about going off the grid, you might be interested in this company, they sell RVs. So we're going to dig into their financials and try to figure out whether they're worth investing in. Let's get started. Alright, so I'm on Lazy Day's website. As you can see, they sell RVs. They got a variety of models here. You can see all of their brands you might be familiar with. And they even have some pictures of what, what we're, we're talking about here. Here's Lazy Day stock. It's currently trading at close to 24 bucks a share. It's up about 600% over the past year, so it's done pretty well. Can it go further? Well, just a quick look at the P-E ratio would say maybe because they're trading at just about nine times next period's earnings. Very low valuation. The company's market cap is about a quarter of a billion dollars, so it's a very small cap stock here. Short interest is close to 12%. That is a concern, of course. Short selling gives you unlimited downside risk. When you see that 12% of their shares have been borrowed and sold short, that should definitely give you reason for concern. Alright guys, so here is Lazy Day's balance sheet. Really not a lot of leverage, uh, debt to assets below 20%, liabilities to assets about 65%. So, you know, a little leverage, not a whole lot. Current ratio above one, love to see that. That means their current assets can more than cover their current liabilities. Now, the quick ratio is quite a bit lower than the current ratio, which tells us that they're relying on selling that inventory to cover their current obligations. So if we see a slowdown in sales, that could force them to borrow some money. You know, not a great situation, but not horrible. Just something to keep an eye on. Interest coverage ratio, don't love to see that. Just six. Now, again, similar to a lot of companies we've looked at this week that are smaller. If they can grow the earnings, then I'm not too concerned about the interest coverage ratio being low right now. That ratio will rise along with the earnings. If they're not growing, that is a problem. And they're not too long-term asset intensive there. Just about half of their assets are long-term. They got a decent amount of cash on hand. So here's their revenue growth over time. We don't have a long operating history to go on. But what we do have looks promising, especially 2019 to 2020 there. Going from about $645 million to $817 million. That's strong growth. And you know, unlike other growing companies, they have pretty quickly figured out how to turn this revenue into a profit. Love to see that. They had a profit of about $29 million last year. Here are their profit margins over time. Again, not a long history here. Looks like gross profit margin is kind of stuck there, having a hard time improving those margins not too surprising given what they sell it is a big hunk of metal there hard to lower the cost per unit for that but they're able to spread some of those fixed operating costs over more and more units leading to increased operating margins here in 2020 they're close to six percent so very nice to see that margin growth Alright guys, so at this point in the video, I'm going to use an intrinsic valuation model to try and come up with a fair price for Lazy Day stock. So I'll be using the free cash flow to equity model. This model assumes the fair value of a stock is going to be equal to the present value of all the cash flows the company can generate. So I'm going to walk you guys through a spreadsheet which is going to cover all the assumptions I'm making. And then we'll jump straight to the fair value given those assumptions. 
All right, guys, here's what we're looking at. For the coming year, analysts are forecasting close to 20% revenue growth. After that, looking at a little decline there for the following year. And after that, we don't have any estimates. Small cap stocks don't have big analysts following for obvious reasons. So I plugged in about 2.5% every year after that. I think that's probably fair. I think, you know, just be a little pessimistic when you don't have any data, guys. Just assume very modest growth is keeping up with inflation. If that is true, we have a stream of revenue. Now, to get from revenue to profits, you know what your margins are going to be. Most recently, we had 3.6%. I'm going to assume they can just keep that constant. If you look at the industry average, it's about 3.3%. So I have a hard time imagining they can make it much higher than that. So I'm not going to plug in margins that grow to 4 or 5 or 6% or something. So that gives us a stream of profits or net income. Final step is to subtract reinvestment needs. This company doesn't do a lot of CapEx. They don't really do any acquisitions thus far. So I'm going to go with a pretty low reinvestment rate. Obviously because of the massive growth that plugged in 100% for the first year. But after that, I'll say 30% and then drop to 15% every year thereafter. That gives us a stream of cash flows. Let's see what the value is given these cash flows. All right, guys. So if we assume that after the 10th year, they can only grow their cash flows at 1% per year. Assuming that is true, and that again is a little pessimistic if you ask me. We have a total firm value consisting of these three components. You got cash on hand, cash flows over the next 10 years, and then that terminal value. The company would be worth about $365 million or about 38 bucks per share, making it undervalued by about 61%. What's also interesting is these components of the value. 17% of the value coming from that cash on hand. Remember, they got $64 million of cash on hand. That's a lot for a company with a market cap of about $255 million right now. Last factor is insider trading activity. The insiders know more than we do. In the past three months, we actually have no activity. Although in the past 12 months, you got heavy insider buying. When you look at the number of shares, yeah, pretty serious buying going on in the past 12 months there by insiders. So yeah, that would have been a good time to buy for sure. Um, no signal right now. Not much information here. At the least, I can say they haven't sold yet, which is kind of telling. I think they expected to go up further. So kind of a positive signal here. If you're enjoying that content so far, please smash that like button. Really helps the channel. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Final thoughts on Lazy Day Holdings. I like the business overall. It's not an industry I know a lot about, but you know, for me, the proof is in the pudding. The financial statements look really nice. You know, they've shown the ability to generate profits. That being said, they don't have a long operating history. So you got to be careful with this kind of company. Not much history. You know, small market cap, a little volatile. Got some serious short interest going on. They do have risks. However, the intrinsic valuation analysis does leave us a nice margin of safety. In other words, even if I'm being too optimistic or too generous with the reinvestment needs or I'm assuming margins are a little bit too high, we have room for that error. And so it's very likely going to be a good deal. And I, I'm going to buy. Let me know what you're going to do in the comments below. Thanks for watching.